tonight is the worst treaty deal at call, you know, out here at the, at, to the fairgrounds building today, I think, in the walking path, if you want to take part in that. Uh, next Saturday is the big wedding. We all invited to Andrea and Sam to the wedding. Tuesday night, remember Tuesday night, board meeting would change to Tuesday night instead of Wednesday night. So that will be this week, Tuesday night at 6.30. Something else you spoke, I spoke to tell. Oh, Tim and Jenny, I don't know if you know, had a baby boy last week. Got enough hair that it needs a haircut already. Oh. <laughs> And it's, it's almost red. red. Yeah, it's red. Tim, Tim won't cut his hair. <laughs> no, Tim won't cut his hair. Uh, the first Sunday in November is All Saints Sunday, plus uh, we're having our Lord's Acre dinner that day, potluck, potluck dinner after church, and, uh, and uh, so remember that. So that's, I, think that's, I think I remembered everything, unless somebody else got something like that. We're ready for the prelude and the bringing in of the light, and I guess. <laughs>
concern. Uh, last night uh, we went to a birthday party and Cindy started having chest pains okay. and so Theron took her onto the hospital. They kept her overnight. They're keeping her overnight tonight. Going to run a stress test tomorrow. She's down here at Albany or is she in? She's in St. Joe. Okay. And Cindy, so, uh, the daughter-in-law's down in St. Joe had some chest pains and is going to have stress tests tomorrow and yep. some other tests. So, okay, we'll keep her in our prayers. Any others? We did hear Walls there had a baby boy, and how many does that make for them? Three. Three, Three boys, two? Two girls and one boy. Two girls and one boy, so I'm glad everybody's well there as well. Any others? Are you ready to get married next week? So. Are you ready, Mike? Yeah. You ready, Diane? I'm ready. All right. Is Sam ready? I guess. I guess, okay. <laughs> he doesn't have a choice, does he? <laughs> All right, okay. He bought uh, the ball of Jane. What? She bought the ball. Did she? And you have the shotgun or you're okay? Okay. If you will please join me in our prayer hymn number 389. We'll join in freely, freely, and then we'll join together in prayer.
Almighty and gracious God, we thank you for this beautiful day in your creation. We thank you as we come upon fall and can see the beautiful leaves changing, the briskness in the air, the season of thanks, the season of giving is coming. We thank you for the seasons of life that we all go through. We all have joys and exciting things. We all have sorrows and depressing times. But Lord, help us remember that it is all a cycle. And from birth until death, all things are possible with you. And you love us through all things. Lord, we thank you for birthdays and anniversaries and celebrations. We ask your blessing, especially this week and culminating on Saturday, be with Andrea and Sam and their family as they go through this process of, of sharing in a wedding. We ask that you bless them as a couple, that you bless their families, that they can have a full and wonderful married life with you as a part of it. Please be with them this week as they prepare for that moment in time. Lord, we also lift up Cindy and others who are sick or who are having medical tests. We pray for those in our community and our hearts that are fighting various cancers and, and dealing with all that comes with that. We pray, Lord, again for our election time. We don't want to stand here and pray win or lose or who's this or who's that. But help us remember, Lord, that this is our opportunity to pray, to pray, to pray to you and find the answers for the people that would most represent us. Thank you for this opportunity that we have in this country and on our opportunity to be free to worship here. We thank you for all these things, Lord, and just remind us that you came to seek out and to save the lost, and that none of us are perfect. We are all sinners. We all fall short. But we also are all loved incredibly by the creator of this earth. Hear us now, O Lord, as we join together in the prayer that your son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <coughs>
Gracious God, we ask your blessings upon these gifts and the hands that gave them. Help us, O oh Lord, in the beauty of this earth to give. To give of our time, of our talents, of our gifts, of our service, of our faith to you. So that all might see Christ in us and through us. Bless this church as we use these gifts to tell the story of Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Our New Testament reading this morning is 2 Thessalonians 1, 3 through 4. We ought always to thank God for you, brothers, and righteously so, because your one of you has for each other is increasing. Therefore, among God's church, we boast about our per perseverance and the faith in all the precautions and trials, uh, persecutions and all the trials you are enduring. <coughs> And the next one is uh, 11 through 12. With this in mind, we constantly pray for you that our God may count you worthy of his calling and that by his power he may fulfill every good purpose of yours and every act prompted by your faith. We pray that, the, that so... We pray this so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. If you would please raise, uh, stand for the reading of our gospel. As we we're reading this, and as I was working on my sermon, I kept singing the wonderful little song in my head. So uh, for you that remember the song, we're going to sing or hear, I guess, about Zacchaeus. And he was a wee little man. And a wee little man was he. So anyway, uh, Luke 19, verses 1 through 10. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but being a short man, he could not because of the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed Jesus gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is the son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save what was lost. You may be seated. Now you sing in the head and you hear a song in your head. Don't y'all know Zacchaeus' song? Okay. I'm going to sing it to you. I want to ask ourselves a question this morning. Would the most reviled, hated center, sinner feel welcome and loved in our churches? Would drug addicts, prostitutes, those who have lived with multiple partners, those who have addiction problems, the homeless, the mentally ill, the depressed, the marginalized, the prisoners, would they feel welcomed and loved unconditionally? Would they know that we love them? No matter what their lifestyle, no matter what their appearance, no matter what is in their bank accounts, that we love them just the way God loves each of us. When folks come into our churches, do they see us in the kindness and riches of God's love and tolerance and patience and forgiveness? Do they see Christ in us? When they see our church, when they, when they drive by it, do they just look at it and think, there's a bunch of hypocrites? Or do they think there's a bunch of non-judgmental sinners who have been saved by grace? You see, Zacchaeus was a hated man. He was a 
chief among the tax collectors. He was not very well liked. But church is one of the most significant places we learn about God's unconditional love. Somewhere along the line in his upbringing or in his childhood, Zacchaeus at least had heard a little bit about the love of God. He had heard a little bit about this Jesus guy. Church is where we learn of that unconditional love of God. As you and I know, you only love God when you find out that God loves you. What a horrible thing to know that there are so many children who do not know, have not experienced, have not been taught the love of God. We may want to blame their parents, and they might carry some of the blame, but the body of Christ in this world also carries part of the blame as well. As Jesus said, people will know our, we are Christians by our love. Jesus' greatest commandment, two things, love God, love each other. How are we doing? Pastor and author Neil Cole is doing some amazing work in the city of Los Angeles. In his book, Organic Church, he writes about a time that he decided to have a baptism in the parking lot of a ghetto apartment complex in Los Angeles. He and the other church members brought a barbecue, and the smell of steak grilling over the fire began to fill the apartments, and a lot of people started coming out for a free lunch. They started singing songs, and they filled a little kitty pool with water. Cole writes, curiosity kept everyone watching. In fact, the balconies were filled with onlookers. We had new believers sit down in the pool and we baptized three of them in front of everyone. Then we presented the message of the gospel and asked if anyone else wanted to be baptized and three more gave their lives to Christ. Our presence is well known now in the whole neighborhood and we are being watched closely. But this is the really neat part, he writes. One evening, we were sitting in a circle discussing the Bible, and I noticed a young woman watching us. She was not entering the circle, but was observing from a distance with her two small kids just listening. As the weeks went by, this young woman, Juanita, eventually worked her way into the meeting. She would sit quietly and listen to scriptures. A few weeks later, we read about the suffering of Christ, and she was just sitting on the edge of her seat, speechless. Then I read about the resurrection, and she couldn't contain herself anymore, and she said, you mean his spirit rose, or his ghost? Cole said, no, not just his spirit, his whole body came back to life. And then he said, I asked her, do you remember Doubting Thomas? And she shook her head, no. And at that point, Cole realized the girl who put 20 years living in Los Angeles had never heard the story of the gospel. Now I want to share something that happened this week with Carol and I and our joyful noise. And I do not believe this is only in Grant City. I believe this is happening everywhere. We were talking about the Christmas program that, that we have and, and our kids don't sing. They're kind of doing some other projects. And, and we just kind of said, so what would you like to do for the Christmas program? Well, we got various answers, didn't we, Carol? We got Batman and Spider-Man and all these other people, I don't know who they are. But the sad part of the conversation, we had six kids, I believe, and I would say four of them did not have a clue of what the nativity was, did not have a clue of what Christmas was. One of them said it was when Mary and Joseph went on a vacation and they had Jesus, and that's why there's a T in Christmas, which makes absolutely no sense to me. But at least they knew the Mary and Joseph part. But anyway, we have kids living right here, and I believe in every town across America, who have never been told the story of the gospel. Unlike Juanita, but in a similar fashion to Zacchaeus, sometimes we know the love of God, but we just kind of set it aside. It is our great privilege to share God's love with people. And what about persons that hated Zacchaeus? These people who knew about God's life and yet they hated Zacchaeus.
Something doesn't match there. Are we called to be the Christ to persons who have lost their way? Perhaps they've been hurt by the church or gotten caught in the cycle of sin and denial or marginalized or lonely or just never heard of Jesus. Are we bringing them to Christ? <coughs> Zacchaeus was a chief tax collector, as I said. That means one day a Roman occupation had come to this man Zacchaeus with an offer, an offer that promised lots of money. All Zacchaeus had to do was to turn away from his Jewish religion and sell his soul to Rome. And Zacchaeus did it, and he did it very well. He would collect taxes from widows who didn't have enough to pay and, and therefore might be put out of their homes. He would cheat and steal from many persons, but he would be rich. And he would have power, power over other people's lives. But something wasn't quite right for Zacchaeus. For the day that he heard this Jesus man was coming to town, he wanted to see him. There was something about it that he just wanted to see. So he sees this parade coming by and it says he was of short stature. So he climbed up a tree just so he could see this Jesus guy. And in that tree, Zacchaeus waited. I don't know how long he waited, but sure enough, Jesus came by. And not only did Jesus come by, but he stopped. And he looked up at Zacchaeus in that tree and he said, Zacchaeus, come down. I must go to your house today. Can't you imagine the murmurs in the crowd when Jesus stops, talks to this sinner, this terrible guy, and says, come down, I'm going to your house. The other part of the story that's incredible is what Zacchaeus did. He didn't sit in the tree and go, no way, no, no, no. He got out of the tree and welcomed Jesus. That's all he had to do. Jesus didn't force himself on Zacchaeus. He didn't beat him. He didn't shake him. He just said, I'm coming to your house. We are all sinners. We all fall short. But there's something that none of us will ever be without. And that is Christ in our heart and life. Because we as sinners know of God's grace. We know that we have been lost and we might be lost again, but Christ has found us and Christ will find us. So Jesus goes to Zacchaeus' house, and, and I don't know how long he was there. It doesn't say. We don't know what the conversation was. But I can imagine as they went into the house, I'm sure there were people just milling around outside, just waiting to see what would happen. Some probably thought Jesus would come out and Zacchaeus would be laying on the floor. I don't know. They just milled around. And then suddenly the door opened and there was Zacchaeus. Something had happened to him. He admitted that he had robbed the poor and promised to give half of his goods and restore four times those he falsely taxed. Something happened inside Zacchaeus and he knew he was a new man. I would say that something is Jesus. He was told, he was reminded of the love of God. Are you intentional in telling others about the unconditional love of God so that they too may have the opportunity to run to him? We have this chance to tell the story of Jesus because we have been told we need to do it so that no one can say, no one at that church talks about Jesus. Please stand and affirm your faith in the name of the traditional apostles. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. 
Amen. And now let us join in our closing hymn, number 370, Victory in Jesus. <coughs> Let us join and go now in peace. <clears throat>